Want to take advantage of volatility that has sent a high quality dividend growth stock careening down by almost 25%? Looking for a yield that's more than twice as high as what the market gives you and a dividend growth rate that's well into the double digits? Interested in investing in a world-class institution that's been around for a century? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before we get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. Helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is a financial services powerhouse. There are a lot of ways to make money, but why not go straight to the source and make money from money? That is what world-class financial institutions like this one do. And it's why they can last so long, become so big, and produce so much profit. It's also why they tend to pay out large, safe dividends that grow year in and year out like clockwork. I personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. By the way, I explain exactly how I achieved financial freedom in just six years in my early retirement blueprint. If you're interested, you can download a free copy of my early retirement blueprint using the link in the description of this video. Getting back to the stock I'll tell you about today though, perhaps best of all, it looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I wanna share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Morgan Stanley which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Morgan Stanley stock ticker MS is a multinational investment bank and financial services company. Founded in 1924, Morgan Stanley is now a $135 billion by market cap banking giant that employs 78,000 people. The company has three operating segments, Institutional Securities Group, 50% of fiscal year 2021 revenue, Global Wealth Management Group, 41%, and Investment Management Group, 9%. Under the steady hand of CEO James Gorman, who has led the company since 2010, Morgan Stanley has made impressive progress over the last Last decade and turned into one of the largest diversified capital markets banking institutions in the world. The firm's foundation is supported by two very powerful and profitable pillars. First, Morgan Stanley is one of the global leaders in investment banking. This includes capital raising activities, financial advisory services, and corporate lending. The bank is often involved in major IPOs, mergers, and acquisitions. Second, Morgan Stanley is one of the largest wealth managers in the world. Recent acquisitions of E-Trade and Eaton Vance have scaled the bank's presence in the space further increasing its asset base and the fees it can collect. With global asset values almost certain to continue rising over the long run, Morgan Stanley should disproportionately benefit as a result of its scale. For perspective on this scale, Morgan Stanley ended last fiscal year with $4.9 trillion in client assets under management. The way I see it, because of these two pillars, investing in Morgan Stanley is somewhat analogous to betting on the future of capitalism. That's been a great bet for the last century. Despite near-term issues with the global economy, I'm inclined to believe it'll be a great bet over the next century. And that bodes well for Morgan Stanley and its ability to drive its revenue, profit, and dividend higher. To date, the company has increased its dividend for nine consecutive years. The five-year dividend growth rate is an astounding 28.5%. Even after many sizable dividend raises over the last several years, the payout ratio is a low 41.9%. That would portend many more sizable dividend raises to come. However, it's important to point out that a jaw-dropping 100% dividend increase back in 2021 skews the average. The most recent dividend increase of 10.7% announced in July is something that I see as more indicative of the kind of future dividend raises we can expect from here. Don't forget, the stock yields a market smashing 3.7%, 120 basis points higher than its own five-year average. Pairing that kind of dividend growth rate with this kind of yield is a very nice setup. I like dividend growth stocks in what I call the sweet spot, a yield of between 2.5% and 3.5% paired with a high single digit or higher dividend growth rate. Impressively, both the yield and the dividend growth rate are above the upper bounds of the respect 
respective ranges. This is a rare dividend growth stock that seems to offer the best of both worlds. Looking at business growth, Morgan Stanley advances revenue from $26.1 billion in fiscal year 2012 to $59.8 billion in fiscal year 2021. That's a compound annual growth rate of 9.7%. Great top line growth. I usually look for a mid single digit top line growth rate from a mature company, but Morgan Stanley blew right past that. Because of no positive gap earnings per share number for fiscal year 2012, I'll move the EPS starting point up one year to fiscal year 2013. Earnings per share increased from $1.36 to $8.03 over this nine year period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 21.8%. Truly outstanding. It's easy to see how Morgan Stanley has been able to afford 20% plus dividend increases. Bottom line growth has been funding this activity. The close relationship between EPS growth and dividend growth shows great command on the part of management. Excess bottom line growth has been driven by share repurchases and material net margin expansion. Looking forward, CFRA projects that Morgan Stanley will grow its earnings per share at a compound annual growth rate of 4% over the next three years. This would represent a substantial slowdown in earnings per share growth relative to what's played out over the last decade. Is this forecast realistic? I think it is. After all, the two pillars upon which the company stands have both been severely impacted by near-term headwinds. First, the investment banking side of the company has seen a dramatic drop in activity throughout capital markets. Public listings, corporate activity, and general enthusiasm for the U.S. capital markets went into overdrive during the pandemic after a flooding of liquidity via fiscal and monetary policies propelled irrational exuberance, but this is completely reversed course in 2022. Second, the wealth management side of the company is looking at a dramatic drop in asset valuations. The S&P 500 alone is down by more than 20% in 2022, reducing the size of AUM and the fees that can be generated from AUM. But these are both near term troubles, there's nothing structurally wrong with the company. I think its long-term prospects are just as good as ever. It's disingenuous to think the last decade is something that can be repeated ad infinitum, but even a temporary slowdown in earnings per share growth doesn't put the dividend in danger. To the contrary, by virtue of the low payout ratio, Morgan Stanley could still grow the dividend at a high single digit rate over the next few years. And when the markets normalize and earnings per share growth recovers, an acceleration in dividend growth back to a low double digit level could play out. That kind of scenario is extremely interesting, especially with a stock that's already starting off with a 3.7% yield. Moving over to the balance sheet, the company has a rock solid financial position. Total assets of $1.2 trillion match up against $1.1 trillion in total liabilities. Investment grade credit ratings for the company's long-term debt are as follows, A- Standard & Poor's, A- Fitch, A1 Moody's. Profitability is unsurprisingly strong. Over the last five years, the firm has averaged annual net margin of 21.8% and annual return on equity of 12%. Notably, the company was printing single digit annual net margin 10 years ago, massive margin improvement. Overall, I see very little to fault here. Morgan Stanley is a world-class institution that has fused together two fantastic and complementary business models under one roof. And the company does benefit from durable competitive advantages that include global scale, a network effect, switching costs, brand power, and industry know-how. Of course, there are risks to consider. Regulation, litigation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. The financial industry is highly competitive, although Morgan Stanley's uh, scale mitigates competitive pressure. On the other hand, regulation is a problem that only becomes more problematic at scale. The company is heavily reliant on corporate actions to drive profit. As we've seen in 2022, economic slowdowns can result in a severe curtailment of these corporate actions by way of less market exuberance. The company has heavy exposure to global capital markets, as we've also seen in 2022. Anything that reduces asset values and the fees that Morgan Stanley can collect, such as geopolitical flare-ups or economic slowdowns, will negatively impact the company's financial results. I see execution risks here. Recent acquisitions of Eat Advance and E-Trade must be properly integrated and utilized. Lastly, the last decade's material net margin expansion is almost impossible to repeat. I think one should carefully contemplate these risks, but the quality of the business is compelling. And with the stock's pricing almost 25% lower than its 52-week high, the valuation is perhaps most compelling. The stock is trading hands for a PE ratio of 11.2. That's markedly lower than the broader market's earnings multiple. And while that is right in line with the stock's own five-year average price earnings ratio, I'd argue you're getting more for the money now than before. Because of the moves Morgan Stanley has made, which have radically improved the firm, I think it deserves a higher multiple than it's historically received. And the yield, as noted earlier, is substantially higher than its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 7%. 
This dividend growth rate isn't as high as I'll go, and when you look at what Morgan Stanley has done over the last decade in terms of its earnings per share and dividend growth, I might be accused of being overly cautious, but I think this caution is appropriate. CFRA's near-term earnings per share growth forecast is only in the low single digits. The global economy is troubled, liquidity has been pulled, and geopolitical tensions remain high. Still, the payout ratio is low, and the long-term prospects for the company are terrific. The near-term dividend raises could very well come in a bit lower than my mark, but I also believe that Morgan Stanley could easily clear this bar when looking out beyond the next two to three years. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $110.57. The reason I use the dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value of money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates Morgan Stanley as a four-star stock with a fair value estimate of $96. CFRA rates Morgan Stanley as a four-star buy with a 12-month target price of $90. I came out high, but we're all in a reasonable range here. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $98.86, which would indicate the stock is possibly 19% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Morgan Stanley is a world-class financial institution that has only gotten bigger and better over the last decade. With a market-smashing yield, double-digit dividend growth, a low payout ratio, nearly 10 consecutive years of dividend increases, and the potential that shares are 19% undervalued, long-term dividend growth investors looking for more financial exposure ought to seriously consider loading up on this name. And now for a special news announcement. Caterpillar Inc., stock ticker CAT, this month will display prototypes for four electric machines at a trade show in Europe. This kind of innovation is what will allow Caterpillar to evolve and thrive well into the future. We put out a video back in September highlighting why I'm buying this dividend aristocrat. Don't sleep on this high quality machinery company. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like you did and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is, and I'm often invested in the same high-quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who've been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.